one of the myths in the health and wellness space that seems to prevail even to this day is saturated fat and the fear of that. And for people that are going to be cutting down their carbs, naturally, they're going to include more animal products. Their saturated fat percentage of their diet is likely going to go up. Is that at all a concern for you? Or how do you feel about saturated fat? So saturated fat, all all it means is it's stable. That's all it means. (laughs) Saturated fat is stable, and that's why it's incorporated in the cells, cell linings, because it's stable. If you eat unsaturated fat, like polyunsaturated fats, vegetable oils, they're unstable, and they destroy the, the cell lining, and they cause all sorts of inflammatory responses. So when I changed my diet, I started reading the literature and then realized that the case against saturated fat was completely and utterly bogus, completely bogus. And so I, I, you may remember now that I went through a trial for promoting this diet. And I, I described that in, in this book, Real Food on Trial, which which gives the story of the, how the diet dictators tried to destroy top scientists. And, and what happened was I had two years during, four years, but two years to prevent my, present my case. And I went through the literature and I wrote a series of columns and, and, re, and I broke the whole story down that it was just nonsense. That there's never been any evidence that saturated fat causes disease. It's always been the evidence that's carbohydrates that are doing it and the refined, particularly ultra-processed foods. But unfortunately, the industry, the, my industry, medicine, makes a lot of money out of telling you that, that saturated fat raises your cholesterol and causes heart disease. Well, the evidence is absolutely the opposite, that saturated fat's got nothing to do with arterial disease. It's all related to insulin and glucose and diabetes. And one of the things we do, my foundation does, is we teach physicians all around the world. And one of the ladies who's on our current teaching program is a vascular surgeon in Los Angeles. And we asked her, so why would you want to do this course? She said, because I operate on these arteries. And she said, I can tell you one thing, it's got nothing to do with cholesterol. It's all diabetes. And I'm tired of cutting off legs and trying to fix up arteries when you know that in a year's time that artery is going to be as diseased as before because it's the diabetes that is causing the arterial disease. And the moment you cut saturated fat out of your diet, you're going to, you're putting yourself in a high carbohydrate situation, which is what's really going to destroy your arteries. And, you know, medicine knows that because we treat all these diabetic patients for arterial disease. And then, but then if you ask a medical student, what causes arterial disease? Oh, it's high cholesterol diet. But, but hold on. This patient lives in a poor community in Cape Town. They eat sugar most of the time and bread and a high carbohydrate diet. Where's their fat coming from? Because fat's expensive. Oh, doc, I'd never thought of that. You know, <laughs> we had one of our professors who was, who trained a few years ahead of me goes to the Mayo Clinic, becomes a world authority on statin drugs to lower your cholesterol. He comes back to Cape Town and he gives a lecture. Now, of course, he's the visiting honored person, bringing slides, being the expert. And he tells us that the reason why we've got so much heart disease in Cape Town and the poorer people is because they're eating too much fat. Our our research group studies what these people are eating, the poor people eating in Cape Town. It's sugar and bread. That's what they eat. And if they get arterial disease, it's got nothing to do with saturated fat. That's how ignorance, that's the extent of the ignorance. This afternoon, before we spoke, we were discussing on the latest program, I was talking to a doctor from Ethiopia. He says diabetes is rampant in Ethiopia. Heart disease is rampant in Ethiopia. He said, what are they eating? Well, it's, it's a traditional, more vegetarian-type diet because meat's too expensive. So, so the truth is all out there. It's got nothing to do with saturated fat, but the industry managed to, to fool the world, and, and they took me to court 
to try to make make me shut up by saying that cholesterol's got nothing to do with heart disease. Well, it's interesting because as you're talking there, it gets me thinking about the fact when it comes to diabetes, mainstream will accept the fact that it damages vasculature in the eyes and people have trouble with wound healing in the feet and the legs. But then when it comes to the heart, we we blame it on saturated fat. So it's just this incongruency of of the root of the issue. Yeah. And I mean, if you go to a renal unit where they treat people on dialysis, in this country, 80% of the patients are on are, are diabetic. And the renal disease is caused by arterial in the very small arteries in the kidney. That's what causes the problem. So it's a specific type of disease and it's specific to diabetes. And it causes all this kidney failure. It's an arterial disease. It may be in the kidney, but it's an arterial disease. And But they can't put the two together. And uh, because it's if you do that, then you're questioning the cholesterol theory, and that makes you a conspiracy theorist. Now, I was called a cholesterol denialist. <laughs> so the fair, I describe it in here, the cardiologists in my town. Noakes is a cholesterol denialist. We've had enough of AIDS denialists in Africa. And now he's a cholesterol denialist. <laughs> what is a cholesterol denialist? I mean, that's... <laughs> are you ever left wondering whether these dietary and lifestyle changes you're making are actually having an impact on your health? This is where Inside Tracker comes in. You get a personalized picture of what's happening inside your body and a custom action plan to help you reach your health goals. There's five steps to the process. First one being choosing your health plan. Second, you get your blood work done and they make this really easy. They can come right out to the house. Step three is to get your analysis. Step four is to implement your custom action plan. And then step five is to retest and recalibrate. And that last step you can do periodically over time to continue to monitor what's happening inside your body and continue to tweak your diet and lifestyle. As a viewer of the show, you get 20% off Inside Tracker by following the link in the description and using the code JESSE20 at checkout. Sign up for Inside Tracker today to get a personalized picture of what's happening inside your body and a custom action plan to help you reach your health goals. You've touched on plant-based diets a couple of times there. Have you seen anybody successfully adopt a low carb diet while staying plant based? Yeah, certainly some people have reported that they have benefited from it. And so, you know, I, I accept that. And there are people who claim that a, a zero fat diet can also reverse diabetes. But I want to see the evidence. The evidence comes from some very shady studies done, I think, in the Philippines or somewhere. There was some sort of guru who started promoting this zero fat diet. And I, I, when I was starting running, there was a guy called Pritikin in the States who was promoting a zero or very low fat diet. And ultimately he committed suicide and whether that was because of the low fat diet or whatever, but it never took off except sadly, Senator McGovern, who was driving the 1977 dietary guidelines, was a fan of Pritikin, and he promoted this low-fat diet for all Americans and as a consequence for all the world. And he was very strongly influenced by Pritikin. And so Pritikin's stamp still exists uh, around the world. So it is true that there are claims that a zero-fat diet can reverse diabetes, but I can't see how it works. I just I can't see the mechanism. Because a zero fat diet is a high carbohydrate, very high carbohydrate diet. And that must stimulate insulin and that ultimately must cause problems. I was in, in an interview with another very famous podcaster in America. I won't mention his name. And he believes he went from low carbs to low fat and higher carbohydrate and said he lost a lot of weight and it cured his glucose, improved his glucose. So I, I believe that, but I don't know how applicable it is to the general population. It definitely sounds scary to me, considering the fact the brain is predominantly fat and the neurons are covered in fat as well. It just just doesn't seem to make sense. No, I agree with you. Yeah, I Let's wouldn't want more- to do that uh, because I, I, you know, dementia is a real issue. 
And it seems to me that dementia is strongly linked to a fat-free diet or a diet low in protein. And the other thing about a low-fat diet, I worry about osteoporosis as well. Because now, it's interesting, I was watching yesterday the the king of england was walking and march while walking they were walking together with the prime minister or the president of france and the president of france is a very upright man and it's clear to me that he does body he does weight training because he's got a lovely arched back and his head it sits straight above his spine there's no none of this but if you compare him to the older king you see the older king was like this and he doesn't have to be like that. Even though he's my age, he doesn't have to look like that. And I worry that when I look around at people my age, I, that's what I look for. I look for the presence of this fixed, rigid position and osteoporosis. Because the the, the professor who, who advised me to eat a low fat, low fat diet died of advanced osteoporosis. And no one questioned, hold it, you've eaten this almost fat-free diet and you get osteoporosis you know could it be linked no one questioned that if you enjoyed that clip press here for the full episode i'll see you over there so for 33 years i promoted the carbohydrate diet and it took me to get sick and when i got sick and felt fat and lazy and couldn't run properly i was ready for change and that's the moment the moment you're ready for change